Welcome to Amplify, a podcast series by the Association for Accounting Marketing. My name is Patrick Eagle, Marketing Manager at ASCPAs in Massachusetts, and I'm your host for today's session. Our guest today is an award-winning marketer, visible expert, and business strategist who helped pioneer the field of research-driven marketing. Is a managing partner of Hinge, a marketing firm that specializes in professional services where he draws on his PhD in behavioral psychology and his CEO experience to help clients achieve higher growth and profitability. His groundbreaking research into professional services marketing has made him a recognized industry name and has been widely quoted in publications from Fortune Magazine to the Wall Street Journal. He's written six books on marketing, business strategy, and organizational growth. And he's worked with a wide variety of clients, including American Express, Capital One, Paychex International, and Blackboard. Please join me in welcoming Lee Fredrickson. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how marketing spending is changing in accounting firms. And this coincides with the release of the Marketing Budget Benchmark Study, which we'll be discussing produced by AIM and the Hinge Research Foundation. So we'll get uh, right into some questions. Uh, okay. So how many firms uh, participated in this year's study? Well, this year we had 84 firms, and um, I don't know whether that sounds like a lot or uh, not very many. We were up from, let's see, last year we had 67 the last time we did it. So it's getting to be more firms, but interestingly enough, the data is pretty in-depth. So we know an awful lot about how they're doing this marketing spending. And it's really the first time when we have repeated kind of apples to apples and oranges to oranges comparison. Hmm. Yeah, it's not just all lumped together. It's pretty well segmented. So it's good data. Interesting. Um, and over the course of the study and putting it together, what, what have you learned about marketing spending, marketing spending overall? Well, the first thing is that marketing spending seems to be inching up in the last two years. Uh, so it's gone from an average of, let's see, we were at uh, a little under 4%, 3.94% in uh, the last years, and this were over four and a half percent, four point, almost 4.6. So while that doesn't sound a lot, that is a, a, an increase uh, two years ago over two year, over this one, it's been an increase of about that uh, half a percent. Hmm. That kind of reflects the trends that you've seen in the industry yourself. It does, and uh, I think what it tells us is that uh, uh, the marketing of accounting services is getting more competitive. Hmm. People are needing to spend more on it. All right. Um, so in the study, you cover marketing techniques that have the highest return on effort. Um, can you talk about those a little bit? What are those? Hmm. Sure. Now, uh, to help people understand what we're talking about with return on effort, one of the things we did is we looked at how much effort do you spend on each one of these techniques not we looked at dollars but also at the amount of time you spend on each one and then we looked at the impact those have and so the question is you know some techniques where you put a lot of time into it and it's yeah you know you don't get much out of it others you do you put some time into it and they seem to get a positive return so it, just going across uh, if you look at just the only thing you ask is which of those give you a best return first of all it's outside consultants agencies or freelancers now you know that's uh, uh that sounds like well gee is that really true but when you think about it if you're using them for specialized things it's probably a lot easier and a lot less expensive and you get a lot more impact so i think that's where that comes for the freelancers Mm -hmm. The other one is website expenses and SEO, search engine optimization. Uh, again, it's we know from other research that firms, about half the time, they get ruled out before they even talk to them. And the primary way that happens is through your website. 
people mm-hmm. go to the website, they don't see themselves there, they don't see what they're looking for, there's a lot. So that's a good place to invest marketing. Yeah. Another one is email marketing. You know, email marketing has been around, I think, since uh, a little after Ben Franklin. You know, it's, uh, it's got a long, long history, but it is a good, solid way to generate, particularly if you have uh, a, you know, a well-maintained list and you use it appropriately. You can get a lot of leverage out of that. And the fourth one is the marketing automation and CRM software. So and I think we're seeing that uh, a shift to some of the tradi- non-traditional, the uh, online SEO, marketing automation, the things that we didn't do 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. There's a, a shift to those. Now, if you flip it around and you say, which ones give you the negative return? In other words, you're putting more into them than you feel like you're getting out of them. Uh, first one of those is charitable giving. Mm-hmm. Now, we don't want to sound like Scrooge here, and charitable giving is a wonderful thing to do, but it's just not a real good marketing effort. Right. You know, so if you're going to do it, do it, please, but don't call it, don't take it out of your marketing budget where that poor marketing person is going to have to try to make something happen while you're doing something that's not marketing. Another one is firm, internal firm events and parties. Now, a lot of firms, they'll have a, a celebration, you know, they'll invite their clients in, they'll invite people in, and they'll have these kinds of events. A good thing to do, good thank you, but don't seem to produce a lot of marketing results. Hmm. The people that are likely to come or be, are already engaged with you. So you might feel good about it, but not so much. Direct mail is another one that's not uh, producing the kind of results that people want. Uh, you know, you can make the case that direct mail isn't being used as much so it can stand out a lot more. You hear that case being made, yep. but when you look across the board, it's not really producing the results that uh, some people would like to get. And then the last one is sponsorships. Now, that that is uh, uh, the single largest expenditure in marketing departments is sponsorships. And if you look at uh, referrals, what actually drives referrals, and this is from another study we did, sponsorships are the least effective things to drive referrals. The least effective. Yeah. So uh, here we have a situation where people are spending a lot of money, the most amount of money, on what's proven to be the least effective kind of way of doing it. So if you're just going to write a check, put your name on this one hole on a golf charity golf tournament, or you put your name on a banner and nobody shows up at the event, probably not going to do very much. So those are the ones to where you can probably take money out of your budget and reallocate it to something that's more likely to produce results. Makes sense. Um, in the course of the study, did you find... Um any key differences between high growth firms and low growth firms? Did we? I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, there's a number of them. Now, uh, just to sort of clarify the way we uh, do this uh, in the study, because it was a relatively small study, we took the fastest growing 20% of the firms. Okay. This is organic growth, not from mergers. Fastest growing organic and compared it to the slowest growing organic. Now, the fastest growing was growing by an average rate of 20% a year. So it's pretty significant. Yeah. The slowest growing was shrinking by 2%. Okay. So you basically have no growth versus relatively high growth. And you found that uh, there are some characteristics of firms that are pretty enduring that keep coming up over and over in these studies. One of them is specialization. So having specialization, having a good, strong differentiator, those kinds of things, those tend to make a a big difference. But there's also some difference in the marketing techniques they use, how they go about marketing. And so you almost have a like, here's a high growth marketing and here's a low growth marketing. Now, some things they do the same. Pretty much everybody spends money on websites, for example. And, you, you know, you have to spend it. But there are some differences. And what you get in the, uh, the low growth 
area. So if you look at what doesn't work for growth, you see at the top of the list is sponsorships. Yeah. Now, again, that's what the other, uh, the other question answered, and so it makes sense. So sponsorships is something not associated with high growth. Another one is marketing materials, spending money on marketing materials. Oh, yeah. Uh, interestingly, uh, you know, some having good marketing materials, I think, is important, but so much of it now is becoming tailored and it, it's online and tailored to the specific person you're meeting with. And the days of the printing, the brochures and stacking them up, I think it helps uh, uh, people who are not secure about their own ability to market. It helps them feel like they got something that they can give and, yeah. you know, they'll, but as a marketing techniques is associated with low growth. Uh, and then we have memberships and dues. Again, if you're going to just be a member and if you're not going to really work it, it generally tends to not work. And then finally, internal events and parties. So the things that give a low return on your effort are the same things that the low growth firms are using, hmm. which is mm, doesn't, doesn't work too well. Yeah. That's interesting. So now if you flip it over and you look at, okay, well, what are the high growth firms do? What are they doing differently? Well, first of all, you get online advertising. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the first time that online advertising has come up. Uh, two years ago, it wasn't really a factor. But now it's starting to come up that firms are starting to get some, uh, some traction with online advertising. I think it's very much related to content marketing and specialization. Oh, yeah. so you're talking something about that, that really, it's not just, hey, you need an accounting firm. It's mm -hmm. more learn about how we help with state and local taxes. Right. That kind of thing. Find a lot more success with the special yeah. candidate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now, networking events, trade shows, conferences are also a very positive thing. And again, a lot of marketing people have recognized that for a while. But of course, you've got to actually participate, plan for them, do them, follow up those things to make them effective. But they can they can really help because they get they balance that online with some offline things. Content creation, a third thing that they do, creating that content that displays your expertise. Educational events, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know online parties and celebrations when you bring people together to educate them about a service or about something that's important. Uh, outside consultants, agencies, and freelancers, same kind of thing that was a, a strong return on investment. Marketing automation, again, strong return on investment. And internal education and training. And by that, meaning training your staff, training your business development people on how to use a newer marketing and business development techniques or increasing the skills of your staff on marketing automation or analytics or content creation, the things that represent all of those are associated with high growth. So basically you're getting two groups of firms that are sort of separating themselves. They're the winners, those that are growing fastest, using these kinds of techniques and there are the laggards those that are falling behind and i think that is going to play itself out in the marketplace where your marketing techniques are going to have real direct impact on the viability of your firm interesting I've seen yeah. a lot more direct impact from the marketing departments i think in professional services i i know so many people don't think you know they say well marketing doesn't work or it doesn't have much impact but of course it doesn't work if you use techniques that don't work <laughs> you know, right. diligently applied and ill-conceived technique doesn't really help you that much right or you have the right idea you know and i've had people say like oh yeah we, we tried seo once and it didn't work like that. So, you know, obviously if you don't implement a technique in an effective way, it's not going to have the desired impact. And that I think is in fact what we're seeing. It's like, uh, you know, you can make a case that marketing is one of the key things that drives the successful firms. And that's a case that hasn't been made, but I think needs to be made. Definitely. Yeah. My last question for you, um, from reading the study, I understand in previous years, uh, low growth firms 
outspent high growth firms in advertising. Mm -hmm. This year, the number is kind of flipped. Can you uh, kind of talk about that a little bit, explain why? I can, I can. And, and this was one that was really, when we first saw it, it was like, whoa, what, where, that's a head scratcher. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem, it doesn't make much sense until we dug down and figured out what's going on. What's happening is the slow growth firms are spending their advertising dollars on display ads, print publications, the business journals, that kind of thing, the vanity ads. That's still not working. Hmm. Whereas the high growth firms are shifting their advertising to the online advertising that we talked about before. Right. So overwhelmingly, the low growth firms, no online advertising, high growth firms shift into dollars into online. So I think it's consistent with what we were talking about with very well targeted expertise mm -hmm. aimed at a specific target audience and conveyed using content and online advertising to target the very people you're looking for. That's interesting. Yeah. Good, nice to see such a big shift of uh, effective towards effective advertising too. It, it is. And I, I think one of the interesting things is how quickly it's happened. Yeah. This is over two years. I mean, that, that, that's, uh, that's pretty quick for professional services marketing where it seemed to used to take a decade for a concept to, you know, start to get embedded. Uh, not so much anymore. For sure. <laughs> um, well, great. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Lee. Uh, you shared a lot of great information about how uh, marketing spending is changing in uh, accounting firms too. Okay. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. All right. Uh, this wraps up another episode of Amplify. Please watch out for um, another podcast from us next month and check out our other episodes. Listen.